Uh, Gloria, these text messages between Meadows and, and dozens of lawmakers, especially we see Scott Perry right there, Congressman Perry, really highlight that there were a lot of people involved in this effort to overturn democracy. Well, you have more than uh, 400 texts with Meadows from members of Congress. Uh, Perry, in particular, was citing all these conspiracy theories, invite, uh, you know, including with Great Britain, Italian satellites, China. And I think what's most disturbing is if you look at these text messages and what Caitlin is saying, is that he kept quoting intelligence sources. He wanted to get the director of national intelligence involved. And if I'm the Department of Justice, one of the reasons I want to look at the contents of his phone is who in, in, in the intelligence community, or formerly of the intelligence community, was he communicating with mm -hmm. to get this completely fraudulent information? And, and, and one of the ways that a bipartisan group of Democrats and Republicans was trying to make sure what happened in the last election doesn't happen again uh, was the Electoral Count Act, which would bring clarity to the part of the Constitution that people were trying to exploit to get Pence to overturn the election. Um, and Senate Majority Chuck Schumer, he wants to include that in the big spending bill. Kevin McCarthy, the Republican leader in the House, he told this conference he's a hell no <laughs> on that bill. Is it, so it's just not going to happen? Uh, I think it, I actually think it still could. Um, and of course, they're trying to do this before the end of the year, before McCarthy has his speaker fight, has the opportunity potentially to become House Speaker, and before Republicans take over the majority. If they're able to do that, we saw Senator Susan Collins today say, we need to enact this, we need to get this in place before the end of the year, before the 2024 presidential cycle really starts to heat up. Uh, if they can do that, I do think it has a chance of passing. But also simultaneously, you know, trying to get this into the year-end spending bill, the omnis bill, will be difficult. We're not even sure it will pass. Um, I think right now we saw Mitch McConnell today say that if they cannot get an omnibus bill done by the end of the year, by December 22nd, um, they're going to go home, senators, and they'll have to do a long-term, short or longer-term continuing resolution, which is a short-term funding bill. And so it's really going to depend on whether they can fit all this in and actually get a long-term spending bill done before the end of the year. And, and Rena, just on that point, Mitch McConnell uh, said what, what Elena just said, but uh, McCarthy was saying something different before the midterms. Mm -hmm. He was saying, I don't want to start the government out in a shutdown. People are going to want us to see <laughs> us accomplish things on the, on the commitment, but now he has a completely different point of view. I mean, these are the toughest seven weeks of Kevin McCarthy's life, let's be honest. And I think in general, when you look at the situation, what I take away from it is that McCarthy's just all wrong. He's got no calculus on this. The guy has no confidence of his caucus. He's got junior members who are speaking out against him in a fashion that we have not seen for years. The unfavorables are so high that I, I mean, I see him eking this one out. I do. He's got a fantastic whipping operation. He's you mean had to, it to become years. the speaker? To become the speaker. Yeah. Does he deserve the speaker's gavel? That's the other question. There are a great many Republicans who just do not believe in him. And what we're seeing right now is this this is just constantly the problem with Congress. And it's going to make its way to the American public sooner than later. And we already see the frustration, the rage against the machine politics. But what this is going to do, this doesn't make it better for the Republicans to go back to their base and say, we've been trying to rewrite the rules for you because the rules are all wrong. This makes it harder for them because they're showing they have no solutions, they have no way, and they can't find a way. You know, it's interesting, and I wonder how you would answer this question, mm -hmm. because uh, earlier today, Manu Raju said something to McCarthy about how Matt Gates, the, the MAGA Republican congressman from Florida, Matt Gates says he doesn't have the votes. McCarthy doesn't have right. the votes to be speaker. McCarthy says, "Yeah, I, I do. Who do you believe, me or Matt Gates?" And I thought to myself, "That's a re that's actually really a tough question." <laughs> that is a very tough question. But I think you talked about what Kevin McCarthy said before the election. He said a lot of things before the election. He also said that Republicans were going to govern that Republicans were going to focus on bringing solutions to the American people on inflation, on crime, on everything that they ran on. And what's the first thing that they announced? Investigations, possible impeachments. And now they're obsessed and they're focused on the speakership. And what is Kevin McCarthy doing? He is selling out to his MAGA constituents in order to be able to get to the number that he needs to get for this. And what this says to me is that there's going to be a big split, in a, if it can get any bigger, between the House Republicans and the Senate Republicans. McConnell is speaking common sense. He wants to get this done, I believe. He wants to get this done because he knows how this is going to look to, in front of the American people, the Republican Party, yet again, if they don't get this done and there's a possible shutdown and, and all of the chaotic rest of it. 
this is exactly what happened during the election, right? The, the, the House Republicans were focused on election deniers, and a lot of them still won. There's still 147 Republicans who did not certify the election mm -hmm. in Congress. But the senators, they saw what happened when they actually gave voice to those non-common-sense uh, Republicans, to the election deniers. They lost the Senate. And so I think this is what is going to be looked at in the Republican Party as to who is going to win, and there's going to be a big battle still. They have not learned their, their lesson in terms of the election, at least the House Republicans. That battle is still ahead. I, I exactly. really believe the worst is yet to come for the re Republican leadership in the House. Well, they only have, what, four or five votes? That McCarthy can only lose four votes in a, in, in a right? It would have been right. better to not have won the House, honestly. I mean, with this slim of a margin, my gosh, how is he going to corral this clown caucus, number one? How is he going to get anything done? Well, how is he going to stay speaker? <laughs> I mean, well, is it possible speaker? that he doesn't get the speakership? I there's, I, honestly, I... I there's not there's a strong, there's, there's, there's not a strong uh, alternate yeah. candidate. Anything's possible. There's not right. a strong alternate candidate. But just to explain this to our to our viewers, so assuming that they don't get this omnibus spending bill uh, through, mm -hmm. then it goes to the next Congress when Kevin McCarthy is in charge. Theoretically, he's the Speaker of the House. Let's just assume that happens. And the fear I think that a lot of moderate Republicans, even some conservative Republicans, and certainly Democrats have is Kevin McCarthy can only lose four votes. Democrats are not going to want to own any, mm -hmm. any, any of these fights. Uh, and you'll have the Margie Taylor Greens of the world hold, making demands, making mm -hmm. big, big demands, and having the power to do so, right? Exactly. I mean, having such a narrow majority is a nightmare for McCarthy and for whoever will control the speakership. I do think, you know, and just going back to what we were discussing before as well about, one, with the omnibus and spending package, even though he's privately saying we want to be able to handle this, wait till uh, the majority, Republicans have the majority, he doesn't want that. He doesn't want this fight to play out at the same time that he's trying to win this leadership race. And also, I do think, I mean, I know there's a lot of talk about what kind of demands can Kevin McCarthy make um, or cave on, excuse me, uh, to some of these far right figures, people like Scott mm -hmm. Perry, like Matt Gates. I think one thing, though, is even if he does make their demands, the big one right now is on motion to vacate the chair, which right. is a very messy, messy... But just to explain that, that yeah. me, basically, doesn't that mean we, at any Anything. moment we can, like, get yes. rid of the speaker? Well, they can... And, and Democrats can do it, too. It's not right. just Republicans. Right. I mean, they can make a motion to vacate the chair. And so it's like, sure, you can hang on to power, but how long will you have it? Um, and I do think that even if he does cave on this, and it's unclear right now, I've been talking a lot with his team and others... Um, he knows that this could really jeopardize his position if he doesn't cave, but also recognizes how dangerous it would be. But I don't know if they would even, some of these members would even still vote from after this. They, like Matt Gaetz and not. Andy Biggs, it's very personal. I guess, yeah. Can I just be. say one thing? In the short term, nobody wants to be responsible for shutting down the government. Yeah. It is not a popular thing to do. 